One sec. So I can it mute myself. Free. You go. Wonderful. Welcome. That was our intro. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. This is uh, LCCA, and this is our first digital salon, and we'll explain what that is in a minute. My name is Dr. Kate Armstrong, and I'm joined here by Alias Latif to my left. Please introduce yourself, Alias. Hi guys, welcome to our salon. I'm, um, I'm a um, course director for graphic design in uh, LCCA. I'm also a, a, a senior architect uh, and I've been working in the creative industry for almost 25 years. So you don't I, look old enough, Alias. No. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and down there is our Sadie Clayton. Please introduce yourself, Sadie. Hello everyone, so I'm Sadie and I'm the course director of fashion at LCCA, which is um, a partnership with UCA, which we're super excited by. Um, not only that, I am a practitioner in the industry, I'm an artist and I specialise in copper metal. You do indeed, and spirituality. And spirituality. spirituality. Well, the whistle is a bit experimental. We don't even know if anyone's watching us, but if you are, thank you very much. And if you're watching at a later date, thank you as well. We have Ahmed in the sidelines helping us with production. Give a shout out, Ahmed. Hello, hello, everyone. Sorry, hello. I was just on mute. Hi. Right, not to worry. Thank you for sorting us out and project managing us all. So today is we're launching our digital salon. Why salon? Well, it's it's rooted in the 16th century, the bourgeoisie, where people were invited to literally the salons of uh, Italians and French, where it began, and they would have an intellectual exchange of ideas. So whilst the rest of the world has gone online and are doing webinars, as we are a creative institution, we've decided to rev it up a little bit so hence it's a digital salon so here you'll find us on a weekly basis or maybe fortnightly if uh, people are tired of us and um, we're going to be joined by course directors director of programs and other guest speakers as we see fit and the idea is that we wanted to immerse ourselves in the creative industry so often we get bogged down with our teaching or operations or strategy and vision and I wanted to as a head of college remind ourselves that we're in this industry and whilst we're all locked up and can't go to as many conferences and events as we'd like to why not set the agenda and uh, <clears throat> excuse me discuss creative uh, industries topics uh, as they come to us it could be a quote it could be an article that we've read and that's really the very loose experimental brief that we've set ourselves so welcome and Sadie read an article by ID Vice magazine I believe so Sadie talk about that let's kick us off Sure. So the article is super interesting. It's called Thinking of Leaving London. Here's the cases for why you should. And it instantly got my back up. I was like, hang on. No, we should not believe in London. You know, it's like this culturally enriching, incredible place on the planet. And we all gravitate to this area, you know, especially as creatives to be together and find a community. Uh, so it got me wanting to read more. Um, and there's about four creative people that have been interviewed and they've all got totally different backgrounds and uh, different disciplines. And a few of them really sort of touched me because I understand from their point of view why they wanted to leave London, but also at the same extent, us young creative people should be the ones that are keeping this fire burning and keeping this culture and this creative sense flowing. Um, and one of the points was about gentrification, which I totally get it. When I moved to London 10 years ago, I used to love going to Camden, going to Portobello Road, um, going to Brick Lane, picking up the latest bits of vintage that were super cheap. And now it just doesn't exist. It's super commercial. Mm. So I do under understand from that perspective. But at the same time, London's moved at a vast pace. So we've got incredible things like late at Tate, where Tate put on um, late nights for young people to go and be involved in events and meet new people and engage in art. Uh, the Royal Academy have also done something similar. Um, <clears throat> you know, not only that, we've got this new digital world that we're all living through, obviously because of COVID and it's bringing a lot of communities together. Yeah, it might be via Zoom or, you know, that app called House Party uh, during lockdown number one. Uh, you know, so there is still a sense of creativity and people still wanting to find fun. Uh, so yeah, I just thought this would be a great topic to start on because we're all now living in lockdown too. We're all frustrated. Christmas is around the corner, but actually there are things rooted within London that's still exciting, that absolutely still excites me. So yeah. 
Thanks, Sadie. I think it's a great topic to, to kick us off in. And I love how you're calling COVID Mark II. Um, I hear you. You know, I've always felt like London is the center of the universe. And I miss London right now. You know, at the moment I go to work, I stay at home, I go to the common, I go to my daughter's school. And I repeat, you know, throw in a couple of deliveries here and there. And I miss walking along South Bank and popping along to Borough Market, popping into Tate, what event is going on, going to the rooftops of the Hayward Gallery. Yes, there's a lot online, but there's, you know, we're living our lives online and I, I I really miss being in London and the vibrancy that it offers. Alias, what are your thoughts? Well, I think, I personally think that this might be a short-term uh, <laughs> scenario because obviously it's lockdown. Uh, lockdown one was hard for everybody and then after it finished, things were starting to get norm, not normal, the new normal. Uh, you were seeing more people around walking and Soho was starting to pick up as well. Mm. Um, lockdown two hits London really hard, and especially the um, creative areas such as Shoreditch and Soho, uh, because people are now scared to go to work. Um, and initially, they were encouraged to go to work, then now they've been told to stay home. Mm. So I think in, in the long term, within the creative industry, um, we will eventually get back to coming to town, coming to London, because it. London, to me, as a creative, uh, is the mecca of um, the creative industry. Um, mm -hmm. So I uh, give it such importance, but it's where everybody gravitates to, from, from Europe, from America, Australia, Africa, and so on. Uh, so, and also as creatives, we're so used to collaborating with one another that we need that one-to-one -one collaborative environment. Mm. Um, and or you only have to walk um, across the street from Soho to Covent Garden to see so many new uh, kind of working environments being launched, such as WeWorks, Shoreditch House is doing the same thing, um, Hoxton is doing uh, similar uh, work environments for collaboration, which they launched in as public as well. So in terms of creative environments, uh, there's a lot for us to explore and um, I personally think that we are going to get back into the groove of things once the sort of things things improve. Um, I don't think it's uh, in in the creative industry it's it, it's it's going to get back to normal. In other industries, it might it might continue with people working from home because it may suit them. But in the long run, long term, um, it's probably also not healthy to mix work and um, how work and living together. Uh. I think you're right, Elias. I think that this is possibly a temporary solution to a temporary problem. Yeah. Um, you know, for centuries, cities have been plagued by periodic crises. The Great Plague of 1665 killed, I hate to be depressing, but 70,000 Londoners and those that could afford to fled the city. I've done my history here. King Charles II and his courtiers left for Hampton Court and Parliament moved to Oxford. 9-11, um, more recent tragedies for all of us in the July 2005 London bombing saw a spike in interest in rural properties. Um, these shifts largely are temporary and as the creative industries we know that we are natural disruptors so maybe this is part of the disruption you know urbanites you know city dwellers moving to urban sorry uh, moving to rural plots where they will disrupt those cities yeah and, and and villages <laughs> and the rest will always be drawn to london i mean sadie you've sp spoken really enthusiastically about it and it's the mecca and it's the center and and it really is and it's where you have your studio it's where you do a lot of your work yeah. we know we've just opened the new lcca having left behind the old iteration we've got a new portfolio of programs as sadie has mentioned um accredited by university for the creative arts we're very much it's london satellite campus and we've been hugely successful in a very short space of time given our great portfolio, great staff, and we've only got a handful of us here today, but you'll see more of us moving forward. And um, we've been really successful. And I think that part of that is that young people are fed up of being locked up inside. You know, we yeah. are allowed to go to work, we are allowed to be taught. And we've seen that firsthand, haven't we? With our induction, we planned meticulously to be able to have socially distanced induction. It wasn't easy, but we all felt strongly as a team that we wanted our students on campus and they really benefited, really enjoyed it. and touchwood so far we've had no no issues at all and um 
So putting the question out to both of you, um, what do you think is the future then for the creative industries and these students that are studying now with us, what do you think will be the future? So uh, a couple of words that I picked up on from one of the interviews from the ID article was this, um, these words of experimental attitude. And I think that is exactly what London offers. You know, we've got these, this huge mashup of cultures. You, know, you walk two yards and you bump into a Somalian. You walk three yards, you bump into, you know, European. We've got this huge eclectic mix. Um, and what better place to see that in an institution, um, you know, kind of adopting this experimental attitude approach. And I think the, this new LCCA, as you mentioned, Kate, um, you know, that, that we are taking, you know, in our stride and we're all excited about has to adopt this element of experimental attitude. Um, you know, so it's about having this agency vibe, having students work together. The industry, that's how it works. It's a collaborative industry. You know, I have had a brand a few years ago and I were constantly putting on shows, not by myself, you know, with the likes of photographers and stylists and dressmakers and a whole team of people. Uh, you know, so I feel like my role as a course director and as a you know as an academic and a, and a, a tutor um i really want to ingrain that in our students that they not only are there to learn the skills and the you know the relevant material for their chosen course but also they need to learn how to live in this creative industry which is very very fast paced and you know it does require this level of uh, experimental attitude uh, so yeah if that answers your question kate that that would be my response there are no rules here at the digital <laughs> salon. We're just taking a deep dive in. And I was the first thing that came to my mind was uh, why Sadie bumping into all these people on the street? Um, <laughs> they well. bump into me. They're like, look at the hair. <laughs> Who are you? The hair gets there first. Well, look, you know, you're, you're giving me a run for my money at the moment. <laughs> you know. so I, I, I hear you. And I think that... Um, I've even looked at rural properties, you know, and I've never thought I'd move out of London. I remember my sister saying to me when I mentioned it to her, I never thought you'd leave London and I'm not going anywhere, but I'm just saying if someone who's a true, you know, with London running through her, her veins is thinking that, then I can imagine that I'm not alone. It's that hive mentality, isn't it? And of course, you know, the world did shut down, literally the planet shut down. So with that comes some solace and some solitude and uh, someone didn't turn us our iPad in the corner, I apologize. Um, and that comes up with reflection and, and from reflection comes change, you know, and if these people are being drawn outside of London, is it that they're going to new territories or are they going home? Is it that, you know, in, some, in the article, some people talked about going home to Glasgow, didn't they? So yeah. it's not that they're leaving London, is that perhaps they were visitors anyway, you know? Yeah. Alias. Yeah. yeah, well, I think Sadie touched on a really important aspect of London is the multiculturalism of London. It's a, um, I mean, us three, we have come from very different backgrounds, for one. And what London offers in terms of multiculturalism is very unique. And this is why we attract so many young people, not necessarily just students, but young professionals who also want to come here and interact with other cultures and learn new skills. There are more opportunities in London compared to other cities because we are seen as the center of Europe. So a lot of Americans are African to um, Australian firms base their head offices here. Just to focus on the positives and not to mention Brexit, I think what we provide in terms of multiculturalism is a great unique selling point and the creative industry harnesses that really well. And we also do very good in terms of educating students and younger generations in, on how to be creative have to how to use their imagination to solve problems so with the current pan pandemic we as creatives are finding the solutions mm. in working with one another in ensuring that the students are coming to campus safely because this is what they want mm. they've had enough of being locked down you know they, they've missed out on social interaction on education on going out and having a good time or even just having a, uh, you know, a conversation with a stranger. It, it's, we are kind of understanding that or appreciating that even more. I mean, I see that myself. I mean, prior to the pandemic, uh, I was in such a hurry that I wouldn't have time to talk to anybody on the street. But now mm. I spend five minutes talking to somebody because there are very few people on the street now. 
Uh, I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, coming up into them. I hear you, and I and I think that um, what we're really, what I'm really pulling out from what both of you are saying and what we're discussing is this is this sense of home and this sense mm -hmm. of place. And students already were always mobile. Yes, if you are London centric, often your students tended to be London as well. But with EU, yeah. you know, you've mentioned Brexit, the B word. We won't go into that. It's not on topic today. However, you know, from 2022 onward, we're going to have some significant changes in uh, student mobility. So. What does this mean? As a head of college, we're looking at getting a lot of our PG content online. Uh, we're not alone with that. I think this has disrupted the marketplace. We all know it's a challenge having a life online, teaching online, you've all fed back to me, and Sadie obviously teaching fashion, pattern cutting, drapery, really challenging online. Yeah. I think that we'll see more and more AI coming forward. Um, I think that we'll see virtual headsets at home so that if we do have to do more of this and actually on a positive, I really see the agility of this, you know, as a working mum, um, I have appreciated being able to stop a call and say, I'm going to pick up my daughter and come back and pick up again. And I felt like I'm really present in that sense, not wasting time commuting. There's lots that I miss as we started this. The physicality of being at an exhibition is very different than online. And I'm taking part in the Beyond Conference from Monday onward, and that's all online. And part of me feels... Uh, excited by the fact I can be there and not have to leave the office or home and I can still take part in meetings but then I, I loved going to conferences and events I love the networking I love going out for an evening having a meal and a glass of wine and going to a, a lecture on a in, a in our wonderful industry and I, so I miss that and I think that's the sense that we're all getting isn't it so yeah. it, we always wanted to be about 30 minutes long and we're 32 in already it's flying by is there anything anyone else wants to say at all on um, people moving from London? Uh, one last thing to add is, um, sorry, Sadie, I'll let you um, continue. Uh, is when you mentioned about uh, moving um, to suburbia or looking outside uh, London, I think that's, an, that's a long-term issue that's been here, and the pandemics actually helped people to address that. The problem with London is that the, your expenses are quite high, but jumping onto the, the property ladder is even... Um, higher you, you know you, it's very difficult but the fact that we all now in not just the creative industry and most of the professions have the flexibility to work uh, from home and balance that uh, situation it, it does allow us to live in a better location or uh, outside London I don't think there's anything wrong with that that doesn't mean that just because you live there you're going to be completely shutting yourself out of or off London Mm, um, which is what I've always felt before. I never wanted to be a tourist in London. Yeah. yeah. And now I've been thinking about chickens and goats and all sorts <laughs> of weird things that I never normally do. You're thinking of <laughs> buying a farm then. <laughs> I know, more like a farm. Not for me, but for my daughter. Sadie, you were going to say something. Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a couple of words and just say, you know, don't give up. Like, you know, we're all in this together and it will pass. You've just got to remain creative and find your hacks. You know, what are your creative hacks that get you through your daily challenges? Um, you're going to have some good days, you're going to have some bad days, and that's the human race for you. So it's just about, you know, really sticking to your guns, sticking to, you know, a routine. Like, what is it that you enjoy? Um, yeah. And keep motivated. Let's keep at it. And we, in, think about it in a year's time we can look back and be like oh my god as if that happened so yeah thank you Sadie thank you Alias I'm assuming Ahmed we have no questions we kept this a little bit on uh, the down low a bit low key as we were a bit experimental with our digital salon but uh, you'll give us a shout I'm sure if there are any questions but um, if you're watching this at a later stage and you have any ideas that you would like us to discuss we've got them coming you know fast and furious we have lots of ideas so you'll be seeing us again same time next week should we do a little wave yeah <laughs> <laughs> wait let me find the jingle so people watching we're trying to find a way to get our jingle in so and thanks to Tom for the jingle mm -hmm. in marketing here we go <laughs> <laughs> Should we do a little wave goodbye? Ahmed, you might want to bump us off before uh, we do any more damage. Bye, everyone. Thank you.